Right, the great New Zealand robbery is the forgotten true crime story of how Auckland mobsters pulled off the heist of the century. And to share more about this intriguing piece of history, please welcome to the Harvey Norman Lounge and the cafe, it's author, the legend himself, Scott Bainbridge. How are you, Scott? Good to have you here, my friend. Now, a lot of people will know your work, because this is like, what, book number six for you, is uh, five. it? Five. Five, but uh, you've got lots of books out without a trace and still missing. They were about more, I guess, missing persons. So what made you want to concentrate on this particular story? Oh, it was just a... Um, during one of my missing books, I wrote about the disappearance of Ron Jorgensen, and um, from that I got the interest in the Bassett Road machine gun murders, which was the subject of my previous book. And I guess um, just studying that era and uh, finding out about this, of the waterfront payroll robbery, the subject of this book, I found that a lot of those characters that were in Bassett Road or involved in that, the investigation and some of the crooks themselves, were involved in that, um, or on wow. the fringes of, of that um, crime scene of Auckland in wow. the 50s. And so I thought it's it's a great story and it hasn't been told before. So No, you're no. right, it hasn't. Yeah. And you know, we're talking a lot of money back then, mm. isn't it? So was, was it a, more a story about safe crackers and mobsters or was it this actual story about what happened at that waterfront building? Yeah, it, it covers every aspect of it. I mean, the, the whole story of the waterfront payroll robbery hasn't really been told before. Mm -hmm. um, the authorities were very quick to cover it up, so it wasn't actually... Um, broadcast a great deal um, because it, was, it occurred only about five years after the strikes and so it was a very sort of sensitive subject to many. So how many much was actually stolen? Uh, it was 20,000 or almost 20,000 pounds which equates today to a million dollars. And how do they do it? Like, what is the story? Well what they did was they broke into the Northern Steamship Company building. It's a building, heritage building that still exists today. In I believe Kingston. it might be a bar or something. Yes. <laughs> <It's a laughs> bar. You know, yeah. 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 <laughs> there it is and there, familiar. Yeah. And they, they, they broke in upstairs and they, um, when they cut the cables to the alarm they very cheekily used the battery to the alarm to to plug in the, gener uh, the detonators <laughs> to blow the safe. When that didn't, the safe explosion didn't work, so they performed what's called, what the gangsters at the time called a soup job, right. which they used oxygen and acetylene and a cutting torch to sort of burn a hole in the top of the safe, so it, I guess resembled a soup can. Right. And then, yeah, reached and took the money and skedaddled. So and, and this, glamorous, eh? The yeah. 50s yeah. gangsters, so glamorous sounding. Well, that's when you were dealing, I guess, with money, uh, physical money, because uh, payroll day, you know, you didn't just get your money automatically sent to your bank account. It was all handed to you in a brown envelope. Uh, so they knew that there was money in there. Why didn't anybody hear the explosions? You know, was it because that building's so thick and old? That's that's right. And I remember when I researched for the Bassett Road machine gun murders, a couple of, I talked to a couple of the... Um, the lawyers and the detectives who, when they did the recreation of the shooting inside the house, um, all they could hear was sort of like a, a quiet pop. Wow. So the, the, and I mean, I've been in that um, waterfront building before and it's, um, the walls are super thick. They built them solid back yeah. then. So it was all pinned on Trevor Nash. He was a bit of a small time crook, was it? Did he actually do it? I mean, what was the story there? I th what I'm, I'm saying in the book is that, um, yes, he was involved. Uh, he carried the can for the thing. He never said anything when he was arrested. They actually picked him up a year later, um, laundering money by tendering, um, going from shop to shop spending £10 on trivial items. So back then £10 was worth about $500. So what he was doing was going into one shop and buying, say, a newspaper, and then going into the next shop and buying a pen or chewing gum or whatever. Is that a bit stupid? That's why he has small time. Well, well, that's right. No, I think maybe going to um, like a, a, a small street on a Friday morning um, maybe he thought he wouldn't get caught, but um, a lot of the shop assistants got together at their morning tea break and complained about, hey, we didn't have m any money in the tills, haven't had time to go to the bank, because this idiot is, um, you know, spending £10. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, from reading the bits that I have in this book, uh, clearly he can't have been the only person involved, is what I'm getting. And I know that you do reveal some names towards the end of the book, so is it your belief that there are other people that got away with this? Definitely. I mean, if you even look at the, the photos of the, uh, in the book of the equipment that was found at the scene of the crime, you know, there's three huge, heavy oxygen cylinders and a set line cylinder, as well as all the uh, the tools and equipment, it would have been pretty difficult for one guy to just go up and down the there. stairs. Um, so, and, and uh, after the investigation, uh, or after Nash was, was recaptured in Australia, um, police received a couple of years later a deathbed confession from someone um, wow. who's saying that, yeah, I was involved in the crime. Interestingly, he was a guy that uh, was picked up and interviewed um, during the waterfront payroll robbery investigation 
and he had told someone drunkenly at a pub that he was involved with yet another person. So, um, yeah, put those three people together and there's... Uh, and the big question is, I guess, what happened to the money? Well, tre well Trevor Nash was found with predominantly £10 notes. Um, what I'm saying in the book is that the other guys re received their... Um, their share in the smaller denominations, which would have would be really easy to launder without arousing too much mm. suspicion, and also the um, the, the banks uh, weren't uh, required to keep hold of the um, and this is the days before computers, the banks weren't required to keep record the serial numbers of the money. Right. So they uh, the police had to go on what the serial numbers of the cash that was left behind at the scene, as well as uh, the recollections of some of the payroll clerks who checking the money earlier. Um, Remembered sort of some of the serial numbers. Well, there and, you know, and obviously the police were very open to you going through that huge file, and you can read more about the twists and turns, and even some of perhaps the people that might have been involved. It honestly, it's a, a great story. Yeah, what a yeah story. It is, it's a great story, and, and the great thing is too, it's a great reconnection of, I guess, a period of history in New Zealand. So go and get that book. It is out now.